Welcome to Lost in Revision. All of our content is public domain, literature, fairy tales, and folklore. We are here to celebrate the original stories, not just read the modern sanitized versions. We post short segments of stories daily and monthly full episodes where we read and discuss popular classics. Come and find us on Patreon to listen to the full chapters early and without interruption. Our goal is to at least break even to cover our expenses, so any support that you can offer to help us reach that goal helps keep this podcast going and you entertained. All of our music is by Nathan Hubble and is used with his permission. Thanks, and enjoy the show. Chapter 20. The Dainty China Country. Part 1. While the woodman was making a ladder from wood, which he found in the forest, Dorothy lay down and slept, for she was tired by the long walk. The lion also curled himself up to sleep, and Toto lay beside him. The scarecrow watched the woodman while he worked, and said to him, I cannot think why this wall is here, nor what it is made of. Rest your brains, and do not worry about the wall, replied the woodman. When we have climbed over it, we shall know what is on the other side. After a time, the ladder was finished. It looked clumsy, but the tin woodman was sure it was strong, and would answer their purpose. The scarecrow waked Dorothy and the lion and Toto, and told them that the ladder was ready. The scarecrow climbed up the ladder first, but he was so awkward that Dorothy had to follow close behind and keep him from falling off. When he got his head over the top of the wall, the scarecrow said, Oh my! Go on! exclaimed Dorothy. So the scarecrow climbed further up and sat down on top of the wall, and Dorothy put her head over her and cried, Oh my! just as the scarecrow had done. Then Toto came up and immediately began to bark, but Dorothy made him be still. The lion climbed the ladder next, and the tin woodman came last, but both of them cried, Oh my! as soon as they looked over the wall. When they were all sitting in a row on the top of the wall, they looked down and saw a strange sight. Before them was a great stretch of country, having a floor as smooth and shining and white as the bottom of a big platter. Scattered around were many houses, made entirely of china, and painted in the brightest colors. These houses were quite small, the biggest of them reaching only as high as Dorothy's waist. There were also pretty little barns with china fences around them, and many cows and sheep and horses and pigs and chickens, all made of china, were standing about in groups. But the strangest of all were the people who lived in this queer country. There were milkmaids and shepherdesses, with brightly colored bodices and golden spots all over their gowns, and princesses with the most gorgeous frocks of silver and gold and purple, and shepherds dressed in knee breeches, with pink and yellow and blue stripes down them, and golden buckles on their shoes, and princes with jeweled crowns upon their heads wearing ermine robes and satin doublets, and funny clowns in ruffled gowns, with round red spots upon their cheeks and tall pointed caps, and strangest of all, these people were all made of china, even to their clothes, and were so small that the tallest of them was no higher than Dorothy's knee. No one did so much as look at the travelers at first, except one little purple china dog, with an extra-large head, which came to the wall and barked at them in a tiny voice, afterwards running away again. "'How shall we get down?' asked Dorothy. They found the ladder so heavy they could not pull it up, so the scarecrow fell off the wall, and the others jumped down upon him, so that the hard floor would not hurt their feet. Of course, they took pains not to light on his head and get the pins in their feet. When they were all safely down, they picked up the scarecrow, whose body was quite flattened out, and patted his straw into shape again. "'We must cross this strange place in order to get to the other side,' said Dorothy, "'for it will be unwise for us to go any other way except due south.' They began walking through the country of the China people, and the first thing they came to was a China milkmaid milking a China cow. As they drew near, the cow suddenly gave a kick and kicked over the stool, the pail, and even the milkmaid herself, and all fell on the china ground with a great clatter. Dorothy was shocked to see that the cow had broken her leg off, and that the pail was lying in several small pieces, while the poor milkmaid had a nick in her left elbow. Thanks for joining us today. Check us out on Patreon. The storytime level is only $3, and you can help us meet our small goal of breaking even and covering our expenses. Your support helps pay for all of the things that podcasting requires and helps keep this show alive and growing. If you can't afford to support us financially, go give us a good review, subscribe or follow, and share with your friends and family. Feel free to fact check us and offer suggestions to make our show better for you. You can also send us an email at lostinrevisionpodcast at gmail.com. There's a lot more waiting for us all at the end of the road.